Okay, everybody, thanks for uh, tuning in. If you're watching this video, you probably just bought one of our kits, one of the memory wallet kits, the minimalist kit, or the uh, uh, the bifold um, minimalist wallet that we have. Beautiful wallets. And uh, what you're getting is, uh, what's coming in the box, it's, I should say, is um, get the our little logo on the box. This is the uh, minimalist uh, and memory wallet. If you ordered a memory wallet, and you'll get um, all the leather you need, all the parts I should say that have been uh, clicked out with the the sewing, the stitching holes. This is uh, we call okay. I'll just name off the parts: the body. We call this the hidden pockets. You'll see why. And these are the uh, T slots because it looks like a little T shirt called T slots. And these are the outside pockets. That's what you'll get with the minimalist. If uh, let me show you, I just might as well just show you the others. This is the minimalist small wallet we have. You'll get uh, the, the two inner pockets like this go back to back with the stitching lines. You'll get the uh, same. Uh, uh, T slots, probably with the brogue, like uh, like this, the broguing. This is a the, that's a term broguing. It comes from uh, making shoes a long time ago uh, in uh, Europe, UK. And then you'll get the outside pockets. It'll look like this. Here's your kit for the minimalist uh, in the leather. Then for the uh, the minimalist bifold. You'll get the body. You get the body, and you'll get the uh, the all-in-one hidden pockets and the uh, slots for the the vertical pockets. And this model only comes in a vertical, where the minimalist comes in what we call horizontal, like this. Okay, if that hope that makes sense. <clears throat> And uh, what I'm going to try to do is quickly show you some of the, the uh, techniques of placing the parts together, getting them right, um, and uh, gluing and stitching and so on. Stitching is probably the most important. Along in this, inside the kit is your little packet of, of thread. The yellow thread is in all the kits for the t-shirts, I should call it t-shirts for the T-slots, for this stitch right here, for this stitch right there, and on both sides. So there's two pieces of yellow that are they're, uh, cut to length for you to stitch these two. And uh, then the other thread, the dark brown, is meant to sew the hole and close the whole wallet together. This same dimension the longer piece of dark brown is also for the minimalist wallet we're not changing the the length you'll have extra thread on this one when you sew this but it's the same you'll get gum trag it doesn't look like much there's not much in there but you don't need much it's uh you just use your finger or the or the little uh, dauber that we provide and you run it across you run it around the edges and it just makes for a nice smooth uh, beautiful edge. You see how shiny that is. It helps you burnish the edges. And you also get a little piece of canvas to burnish with the gum track, water gum track, the two combined. And uh, use that. Then afterwards you'll use a uh, piece, the same little piece of sandpaper, a little 150 grit that we provide. Takes off the edge, smooths it all out, cleans up everything to make uh, a really nice smooth edge. And that's where you get the uh, you, you get the different colors and the layers of it. The blue is the inside is from uh, T slot and so on. Anyway, then you'll also get some glue. And what the the glue we provide is fantastic. It's called Sargum. It's a uh, water-based glue, and uh, it remains tacky like. Uh, like a contact cement, like a lot of uh, leather goods are are, are uh, a lot of leather goods that are used. 
like uh, in the building of Shias, they use contact cement. Well, we found this sargum that's supplied by Rocky Mountain uh, Leather Supply, and it's just been uh, fantastic to work with. And uh, it doesn't dry out, it lets you take your time putting your, your things together, your parts together, and, and uh, getting it all built. So, all right, so what we'll start with is I'm going to show you how I place um, the, the parts together. One of the things that uh, you'll need is this little dauber for the glue. It's, uh, it's just a little convenience to reach in there, grab it, uh, glue it with that so it doesn't get on your fingers and, and uh, let you control it, let you control things. What I start with is these inside pockets. Start with this inside pocket here and the two T-slots, just like that. And the way I, uh, and, and then I use the outside pocket as the guide to measure where uh, my T-slot's supposed to fit in there. One of these X-Acto knives that a lot of people have and are very inexpensive. You can buy these practically anywhere. Walmart, Tandy, Rocky Mountain Leather, I think they might sell this, they might not. Rocky Mountain Leather Supply definitely sells a little scratch all like this. It's just a little sharp point. But one of these little exacto knives are very sharp. They usually have extra blades and you can use it for a scratch all mark things. Uh, it'll really help you. So what I start with is I mark my I mark my hidden pocket with the uh, and, and T-slot together to so make sure I have it all lined up. And what I do is I use the outer pocket as a guide. And also because of this kit has the uh, the holes punched in it, the holes uh, really help you line it up just like, almost just like right there. It's practically done. But uh, what we do is, is um, we lay that pocket down we line up our outer uh, our outer pocket so that it's exactly flush with the hidden pocket. So you get those borders just perfect. When you do that, all of the little uh, the holes, the uh, the sewing holes, line up, and they uh, they're remarkably accurate. Now, I was worried when we first made these dies. I thought, wow, how are they going to line those up? And they do. And it makes for very easy sewing. So right there, I've lined up my T-slot with the outer pocket. All this border is lined up. Oops, I just bumped it. All this border is uh, lined up with the holes. And uh, it, it lines up your T-slot. So let me redo it since I bumped it a little bit. So it's very easy, just like that. We've got the line saying up. So what I do is I hold on my T-slot like that. I remove my outer pocket, get it out of the way so I can mark this. And how I mark is I, I outline it with uh, either my scratch all or the tip of uh, this exacto uh, knife. I just mark the border around here. See, I'm touching the, uh, the stitch lines there mark the border there and there. So all this lower part is of the T-slots marked. Then what I do is I lift up the lift up one arm of the T-slot. Oop, I just moved it. I lift up one arm of the T-slot and I put a little tiny dot underneath the T-slot so that I tell it tells me that my glue starts from that dot and down not above because then it gets it gets in the, it gets messy and I do that on both sides so I've marked a little dot right there like that and it's just underneath the t-slot and that's my guide so I remove that then with the uh, with the edge of my exacto knife I scratch the surface and I begin with just scratching right under the t-slot sleeve we call it the sleeve because it looks like a little shirt I just scratch there. If I go all the way around, I've, I've made a million of these, but every time I go around the first time, 
I end up gluing the whole thing. I just lose my mind and, lose, and glue there and it gets in the way. Because you don't glue there until after the tea slot's sewn in. Then it gets all messy and so on. So I just rough that surface there to help the glue stick better. Especially on this smooth Butero. So there it is, that's that. Then you do the other side, same thing. Grab your T-slot, put it in, or you know, preliminary line it up. Get your uh, outer pocket lined up perfectly, border to border with the hidden pockets. Make sure these are lined up. Bam, just like that. Remove it while I'm holding down the T-shirt. Mark, mark, oops, mark. Mark the bottom. I'm outlining. Go underneath. Bam, a little mark. Go underneath. Bam. There it is. So now I rough this. Like that. Rough it up for the glue. Just like that. Glue's going down here. Okay, there's that. Take the little glue that's provided. Take the little dauber, little leather dauber that's provided. Just open that up. Reach in there, grab a little glue. Very little glue goes on there. And there. Start with one t-shirt, one t-slot and, and uh, complete it before you glue over here because you'll never get to it in time. Okay, so go boom. You can basically just spread it, daub it, and so on, very, very quickly. Put it on there. All this goes underneath the the outer pocket. It uh, you don't you don't see it. Reaching for some more glue. Put it on there. It takes very little glue. That's why that bag doesn't look like it has much but it's enough okay so I take my t-slot and I touch the bottom just ever so slightly just put a little tiny bit on here helps to adhere it and along that stitch line you surprised be surprised just how little glue you need. And uh, as we're creating these uh, kits and we've discovered this sargum glue, it's a, it's a, it really is a time saver to use this sargum. So then I line it up like that. Those stitch glue, those little stitch holes give me a, really good idea where everything is get my pocket that's my guide because everything fits just snug right there at the bottom of the t-slots bam so if you got your if you got this border on here perfect with the uh, hidden pocket and your t-shirt sits down flush part to part you're set up. You're set up just like that. Okay, and there it's glued. And you do it the same for the other side. Okay, and uh, that's the same with the minimalist. That's the same idea. When you do the minimalist, you take the part. That's like your hidden pocket. These two parts go together, but you do one at a time till you sew them all together. So you take the uh, the one side, you line it up, you use your uh, outer pocket as your guide. You have that border just perfect. This piece lines up perfectly with that piece. That's your guide. You just touch the edges so that your your uh, T-slot can move underneath. You line those 
stitch lines up, those stitching holes up with that. This is never moved, so it's still lined up here. These seat together, bam, hold on to the T-slot, remove that, and mark it just like the other. That's your little minimalist. There's nothing difficult about these kits except uh, being disciplined to to sew the the uh, every stitch the exactly the same. Okay, so the, I'm sure the camera can't see the dot, but I see the dot right there. I just mark it. There's my dot. Just go underneath. It's basically the uh, underneath the little uh, T-slot. And then my line. My line is right across here. I like that. I rough that up. And I glue those together, I get my T-slot in, and so on. Okay. So now what I'm gonna, t I'm, I get to uh, tell you one thing about the this kit for the minimalist wallet on the on 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 the on the memory wallet kit we have this row of stitch holes already ready for you on the minimalist we don't it doesn't have the stitch holes you see there's just a a line of uh of uh, where I've scraped it to rough it and we, we did this for just we did this for one reason uh, and it goes way back but basically what we did was we created it so that people can learn how to punch the holes so you go through here into the uh, the uh, uh, the hidden pocket so it's all glued together. When it's glued together and you don't have stitch holes that go all the way through, you have to you have to punch your own holes basically before the leather comes out. Or before the uh, before you, you use your excuse me. You have to punch your own holes before you know trying to sew it. And you can use you, you can use this exacto knife or you can use uh, a, uh, a stitching all which most people don't have one but it's very simple to just once it's glued you line it up and you put a little hole in every little slot just like that bam just like that and that creates a little hole for you to stitch through we did that so people could practice uh, the die has been made like that and that's how we provide it and that's how we teach it and uh, when we sew this uh, I'll show you so we'll get back to that but that's how you glue the, the parts for the memory wallet the parts for just the regular uh, wallets that we that we sell in the kits just like that uh, okay so We'll put together we'll put together this other tea pocket really quickly and I'll be speed up the uh, the video. Make sure your your uh, outer pockets lined up with the with this um, hidden pockets. These are your guides to placing the T slot just right. You see the holes line up. The uh, they seat the T slot to the uh, outer pocket. There it is. Give it a little pressure. Then what I do. Here in the shop, and you probably can do the same thing, find a little hammer that's convenient. <coughs> Excuse me. 
I don't hammer on here. I hammer over here on my stone. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to hit where I've glued. What that what that does, it takes out the bubbles. And it really, really helps this contact cement solidify things. You know, every old shoemaker does that. Why so why shouldn't I? I guess. Alright, so now we got the two the two pockets. We take the yellow thread, we sew these up, we sew those little stitchings holes up like that with the yellow. And uh, we'll get into stitching here towards the end. So that you can that's where you're gonna watch the most in this whole of uh, this whole uh, kit uh, is how to stitch correctly. So without even stitching this, I'm gonna glue the other part or just put this thing together and and, um, and uh, you'll see how it works. So imagine this is this has been stitched, not this, just the bottom of the uh, the the uh, T slot. So now I'm gonna rough up my hidden pocket under here because that's where I'm going to lay some glue down for my outer pockets and once these are in you place we're going to place the uh, whole entire wall together close it all up with the body just like that a little rough doesn't take much we don't use much glue anyway okay so now We'll, we'll fast forward this gluing and uh, we'll just meet you at the uh, at the end when we're about to put together the last outer pocket. Okay, here we go. This T-slot's already been sewn just like this underneath uh, the, um, uh, the lined up outside pocket. We'll, uh, we'll backstitch uh, this last uh, couple little stitches here just to lock it in just like that one little back stitch there will come in uh, there's piercing the the thread which helps lock it in also there tighten it up and uh, one more back stitch Right there. Okay. And uh, that's all I do, except now I get that. I cut my uh, my thread just, oh, I'm not kidding, a 30 second left hanging out there. And uh, take a lighter. Take a lighter just like that and just touch those ends of the thread. Burn them down. I rub them in with my fingers. And that's ready to put the uh, pocket, the outside pocket in. So you see how these are stitched in when your cards go in, this blocks uh, your cards, your, your uh, uh, license or whatever you're using in this slot the same with on this side and then we'll clip we'll, we'll, we'll clip off this extra that we provide we do that just to make things flush and then we'll put it together and uh, and uh, we'll sew it all up but uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you sewing everything we're gonna get into the details of sewing um, saddle stitching and overhead and right and left hand priorities and so on so we'll just quickly uh, we'll just quickly glue this on, and uh, might use a little fast forwarding here. Okay, so we glue that down, line it all up, keep it flush, and uh, holes are lined up, so uh, our sewing will be very, very easy.
We got our exacto knife. We take the uh, excess that we provide in the pocket just to keep things lined up and flush, and uh, we'll just trim it off right there. Bam, just like that. And we do that on the same on the other side. So those are pretty colors. Those are pretty colors. This wall it's coming out nice. So now we have our body and we have what we've been working on. Our our hidden our T slot in our outer pockets. Okay, this is all natural. Butero, butero, doletto. No, excuse me. This is all natural. Doletto, doletto, butero. And uh, and then very simply we glue the edges. We glue around the edges. So you take your little dauber, start reaching for some serious glue, and start laying it on there. And all you really need is glue on the very, very edge, just an eighth of an inch or so. And this might take a while, but uh, this sargum will wait for you. You might be really dry over here by the time you get over here, but don't worry, it's great. Works great, it stays uh, tacky, becomes tacky for you to put together just like contact cement. And uh, and it amazes me, that's for sure. So we glue that whole thing, we glue up both sides. Then we'll line it up together. Okay, done with the uh, the gluing. We've glued up all the edges. All right. So what I do is, what I found is easiest is to grab that inner, grab this this section of the wallet, this half of the wallet, with my hand inside the slot, and I grab the body just like this between my fingers, so that when I put it together, I can just be, just be a little more accurate and things don't get bumped and slapped together where they get stuck. And then what I'll do is I'll try to keep the parts from sticking together randomly by just by gravity. And I'll line those up. So I'm, see my hand is, this hand's kind of holding the two parts away from each other because of the glues they're binding and all I do is is line it up. I'm lining up the parts. And the more accurately you line up the body with the uh, inside, uh, excuse me, with the hidden pockets, the more accurate the holes become. And you'll be surprised as how tolerant those holes are. They uh, don't look like very, they don't look very big but they, uh, they have a long reach. So they line up. I've never had any problems with this, uh, with these uh, dies not lining up to sew very easily. So I've put together those really nice and clean, very accurately. Okay. And I get those, and I take it back over to my Maybe off camera. And I hammer the edges. I take the bubbles out. Oops, got a little thread on there. Take the bubbles out and uh, get it ready for sewing. Then we get the big, the big thread that's provided. Like I said, this same length is provided for the memory wallet and for the small minimalist wallet. It goes all the way around the edge and then more than enough on the, the minimalist. Um, and what I usually try to do is I start my, my sewing right at this bottom hole right there and then I go around this way. I start right there 
because I'll end with a back stitch across that that T slot and so that that back those back stitches go across that T slot right there that's just where I start even when I sew it on a machine I sometimes start on the T slot on the machine okay so now before I start to sew I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a of an edging. I'm going to uh, take the the sandpaper that's provided, and then you're going to you're going to sand your leather like you're sanding a piece of wood, like you're sanding it nice and flush. If you're if you're worried about uh, that you didn't line it up very well right now while it's still kind of wet. The method is this, you kind of bend it and, the, and it, what it does is when you bend it, it sandwiches those two pieces that are glued together, they, oops, when you bend it, the two pieces that are glued together, one of them will be longer than the other when you bend it over like this and you'll be able to straighten things out a bit, you'll be able to line them up better bend it back and forth but bend the short part under the the longer part then the longer part will come down be like this longer part will come down and then you'll be able to line it up even closer okay and then just start on one end Take that 150 sandpaper and then just start sanding. And it's best to sand one way. You know, leather's made of fibers. And so what part of it is you are you're gonna rough up the fibers and at the same time you'll be starting to get you'll start taking some of them away. But if you go one direction it helps in uh, the roughing up of the fibers and then uh, you'll be able to, uh, to sand in a smooth edge all right so in uh, in the shop we don't use a little piece of scrap sandpaper like this we use a a uh, a grinder with sandpaper on it just to speed up things but this really does work and it's just, it's sufficient and if you're real careful j joining your edges and trimming these uh, t-slots you won't have a lot to do but uh, take your time on this and uh, make a really nice clean edge so that when you're done You'll have a, a nice little edge like that. This is like brown on brown, so you don't see the, the contrast. But it's a nice square, flush edge. Makes it really beautiful. Let's see, this one might have some contrasting. Gray and green. Edge really really clean okay so sanding is a big part of uh, leather crafting yeah. okay so sanding your work making a really beautiful edge is a big part of leather crafting it sets you apart and it'll certainly make your uh, your kit, if you're making it for yourself or you're giving it to someone, it makes your kit that much nicer. And then uh, it's like, like kind of like working the wood. Working uh, the leather is the same way. Working, uh, uh, stitching carefully on uh, a project or or uh, painting a project. It's just, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the more loving care you give it, the better. Better it turns out. 
one of the things, uh, the other thing that's a big part of leather crafting is uh, water, <laughs> water and leather, because we use uh, vegetan, vegetable tan leather. It takes to the water and it burnishes with the water and the gum trag that we provide. That's provided in the uh, in the kit. So once you've edged this, or excuse me, sanded it, edged it really nice, you can uh, wet the edges. And if you want, you can use any kind of sponge. You can use a dishcloth. You can use your finger. You can spray the, the wallet. You can <laughs> really, literally, spray the wallet. The edge, it won't hurt it. And uh, you got a nice edge like that. You take the piece of canvas that we provide and you also buff it with that once you've uh, sanded it a bit. And then uh, after sanding and buffing with your, uh, uh, your canvas, you take, you get your finger in this gum trag, just like that. This is the best way of putting on this uh, gum trag. What it is, is it's a, I don't know really what gum trag is. There's uh, different formulas and different brands and, uh, Gum trag's just been used forever. And gum trag is a uh, shortened for a whole, a name that's about this long. Tragnathom or whatever it's called. I forget. Let me start over. <clears throat> okay, so now if you want, wet the edges. Get your finger in this gum trag just like that. Run it across the edge with your finger, and it takes very little. It takes very little to get that on the edge. I'm going around with my finger because my finger got gum track on all in, all sides. But uh, you get that. Then what I found is if I just lay it flat like that with my canvas, and I rub vigorously with this. Uh, this Butero and Doletto, this kind of uh, leather, it'll it'll burnish nicely, and it'll you'll have a nice smooth edge with this. One thing about this leather that uh, we use is it's dyed through and through. It doesn't have a it doesn't have a dry inner uh, layer. It's it's dyed all the way through. So when you when you buff it and you've uh, sanded it and you've edged it and you've burnished it, you're going to have this natural color show through. You're going to have that green color show through. This uh, It's called whiskey show through and then you'll have the natural on the other side. And you'll have those layers of colors that just show through beautifully. That's why we chose, this is part of why I choose Doletto and Butero. I choose, I choose, uh, uh, basically, Walpierre, uh, it's a tannery in Tuscany, and I choose Badalasi, it's another tannery in Tuscany. I choose their leathers over anything else except for saddles. I choose their leather for wallets because of these burnishing qualities, the dyeing qualities, the, uh, the texture, the ease of work, and the, the long lasting. You turn that over, burnish it. Brush it just like that. Part of the stuff you see coming off is glue. Just the glue that's kind of sticking out of the edges. You'll just create a really nice buff burnished edge. And it'll even start to shine. You can see the, the shine in that. I see it. I'm not sure if the cameras pick it up. So just keep buffing it. Just keep burnishing it. You can't almost burnish it too much. This looks beautiful. Just like that. It's a nice smooth edge. 
Okay, so uh, once you've edged it and you feel good about it, after we sew it, come back and edge it some more. But uh, now we'll uh, we'll go into the part of the video that we're going to get some close-up shots of of the needle going in and out, the left-hand priority, right-hand priority, how to how to uh, saddle stitch this wall together and close it all up, and make some beautiful hand uh, handmade stitches. Okay, so let me show you how to prepare the uh, the threading of the needles for the saddle stitch and these. Uh, overhead uh, stitching uh, overhead stitches that we do what you do is you thread the needle just like that you've got this uh, small the end coming out maybe three inches and what you do is take the needle and pierce the thread right down the middle just like that creating a, a loop so pierce the uh, thread just like that then what I do is I pierce it again so I, I pierce it twice just splitting that tiger thread in two so I have two little piercings just like that what I do is I travel it down towards the end like this I grab the end of the the thread and I pull t I pull quickly just like that little jerk what that does is it sends the two piercings down through and you have you have your needle somewhat locked in it's locked in to not let go not to lose your thread through the needle but sometimes it'll travel up to the top and kind of create a fat spot sometimes but it's it's much less frustrating to have it never come apart than a little fat spot on top. So that's that's the way to do it. That's why I sew everything in the shop, including uh, saddle bindings and uh, saddle horns and so on. So let me show you one more time on the other needle because you take the same piece of thread and you have two needles on both ends. Excuse me. Two needles, one on each end. It's like one on each end. So thread the needle just like that. Go in, give yourself some room. See that takes up some length of that needle. Pierce the thread right down the center or so. It doesn't matter if you don't hit the exact center, but try to get the Try to get the meat of the of the thread. And this is a 06 thread, it's very thin. I don't know if I mentioned it, but it's I just mentioned in passing, but it, what we provide is tiger thread, best best uh, thread there is. And then you got the two loops through my needle just like that that's through the eye that's through the thread through the thread okay take the end of the thread give it a quick jerk hold on the needle give it a quick jerk bam and those two knots or those two that'll uh, weave through the thread are locked in there helps you lock it in so now you have the needles on both ends and that's all you need right there to sew your uh, to sew the uh, tea spot, the tea, uh, the tea slot. So now we're going to show you how sewing the uh, the tea slot on the uh, uh, the minimalist wallet. Like I was telling you before, we didn't include the the uh, the pricking holes, the stitching holes. We didn't include the stitching holes on the body on the bottom of the tea slot just to give people a chance to practice um, using an awl, using a, a tool to uh, to pierce the other side. We provide the, the, uh, the stitching holes on the T-slot and uh, that's the guide that we 
that we were using so that uh, uh, we can teach people how to uh, pierce the thread. And we pierced the thread oops, in our classes with, uh, with a stitching awl, like this one. And we were just teaching people to puncture the other side and so on. And that's all really what we want you to do is puncture the other side. And that's what you would do with your uh, X-Acto knife or, the, or something sharp pointy that you use uh, for cutting out your leather is uh, you take I'm using this little pad here so I don't beat up my my surface too badly but uh, we just use a little sharp point go into every hole just like that it's piercing this blue inner inner pocket the inside body of the minimalist. You just go through every one just like that. When we were teaching people how to sew and use an awl, uh, you know, there's, these are leather crafters that had an awl and the object was to keep the awl in your one hand, keep your needles between your fingers and uh, so they had their, their needles like this between their fingers. You use the awl through the leather, turn it, run your thread through, go underneath, pass it through, sewing technique. But for these kits, we just want you to punch all the holes and you'll get, uh, you'll get that needle through, just like that. And uh, once you have your holes punched, be fine. What you do is get your thread, find the center, find the center just like that, and then start to start to sew. And you'll be able to sew like this, uh, like the end of this video is how we're going to teach you how to. Excuse me. At the end of this video, we're going to have a close up on on stitching. You'll get the the hang of it, be able to do it uh, in your sleep. And uh, practicing on these uh, these hidden pockets or these T-slots will be great for you. So when you do sew and close up your whole wallet, you'll, uh, you'll have a lot more confidence. You'll have a lot of experience from sewing these up, just like that. And then, you know, you don't have a stitching pony unless you do have one, but uh, you're sewing it on your table just like I'm doing here. A little more challenging than having it clamped in there waiting for you. So you just like that. Run it through. Make sure you haven't pierced your, your thread. Run it through the middle. So your thread like this, put your thread over so that your needle goes through the loop and pull it tight. Okay, so that's all we'll show you right there. Then at the end of this video, we're going to get in depth with the uh, uh, how to stitch it in very up close, uh, a very up close shot. All right, so that's this is where we'll stop right here because we're going to show you at the end of the video on uh, the exact how exact methods of of uh, sewing a an overhead a overhead stitch. Okay, just for demonstration's sake, we're going to sew maybe six or seven stitches here. Show you the the exact stitch you need to follow throughout your entire wallet. I've taken a shorter piece of thread, I've, I've run it through, split it in half, and I'll just start with the right priority, right hand, this is my right hand. And I go through the very next hole. With my left hand, I grab, I have, I'm holding my needle and putting it underneath the first needle and run it through, just like that. Then, holding both needles and pulling my strings back, 
The reason I pull my strings back is to uh, get them out of the way, kind of make space in the hole they're in for the, the, the next needle, the needle that's to come from the left side. So I just enter it that way. And now what I have on my right hand side is I have a loop. I have a loop just like that. Let's see that loop. Let's see, let me adjust that. I have a loop. And what that loop does is it, it shows me how to put it over the top of that needle, that left needle, the second needle. So I'm going through the loop, going over the top and bringing it through. So you see this, this thread here is going through the loop which, which creates an over-the-top knot. And then it's the same for the rest of the wallet and the rest of your life. Right hand, priority, right hand, right needle goes in first, left hand underneath, pull it through, get the uh, thread out of the way, and I'll, show, I'll tell you a little bit more about that. The reason you pull the thread back and out of the way is because many times this needle will pierce the thread. And if you pierce the thread, it gets stuck and it makes a mess, just a nightmare. But what you do is you test it, you get it out of the way and you can run the thread back and forth like that. Now it's free and clear, okay? So then you like the first stitch over the top and uh, through the loop, we got the, uh, the loop right here, through the loop. Needle comes through. Tighten up your uh, your stitch over the top. You can see it building on both sides. Creates a beautiful stitch. Okay. So right hand needle, right priority, left hand underneath. Just like that, you can see it on uh, you can see that on both cameras. Okay, grab it, pull it through. Here's my loop. There's my loop. Take that uh, the needle that was underneath. I'm pulling back my threads. Go right back through. We'll check it. It's free and clear. Over the top, through the loop, back out. Beautiful stitches. See this underneath, over the top, underneath, over the top. Just like that. And when you've missed a step or you've done it wrong, you'll see it. It just sticks out like a sore thumb. It's the right priority through there. Underneath. The string out of the way, making room in the hole going through check it check it just like that over the top coming back beautiful stitch you'll see it right there just like that bam, bam four stitches do a couple more to show you so right hand first right priority left hand underneath Grab them both, pull them through, creates the loop, pull the, the strings out of the way, make room for the uh, second needle, goes through, we give it a check. All I usually do is pull one little thing like that and it tells you. Over the top and through. Just like that. Beautiful hand stitched. These kits are uh, a great idea. People love them. They like making uh, such a beautiful wallet out of such uh, fine materials. 
what you're going to get is you're going to get two John James 02 needles, 002 needles, and you get Tiger Thread, the best there is in the kit to go with the best leather. Wall Pierre Butero, this is also, oh, excuse me, Dolero and Dolero. Some kits have Butero and Dolero combined. Some kits, if they want, people can get Pueblo. It's by Barolasi and Dolero is by Walpier. But, all right, there you go. Thank you.